Hello, uh, this is Andre, and welcome to my blog about machine learning. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, hugging face uh, zero shot learning. And the idea is to show you uh, how you could do uh, topic classification and sentiment analysis uh, for the text data, uh, which is from the, from the internet without uh, actually training the model, but using uh, uh, pre-trained model out of the box um, uh, from hugging face. So let's uh, start and uh, dive in the, in the code. And the way I'll be uh, talking and explaining the, the 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 material would be just going through the through the source code, and uh, uh, it will be a hands-on uh, type of um, information. So let me switch to the screen. Okay, and first of all, I have a blog. Uh, and you'll find URL in the description uh, for this video where I explain uh, zero shock text classification with hugging face. And basically, I refer to the example which is posted by hugging face team, and also there is an excellent blog uh, written by uh, hugging face team where they describe the architecture of zero shot model and uh, how it works. Also, they give the example. But I thought it would be nice also to try by myself and uh, and see how it works with my own data. And basically, the the whole uh, thing about zero shot learning is that uh, you can do classification without uh, training the model. So you rely on the model which is already trained uh, based on the uh, information from the web, uh, from the Wikipedia's, and so on. And so I'll be talking and explaining uh, uh, notebook that runs on Colab, but uh, uh, if you would like to read more about it, you could always refer to this uh, blog post, uh, which is published on Taurus Data Science by me. And at the end of the post is a reference uh, to the source code, GitHub repo, and also a reference to the notebook that runs on Google Colab. And this is the notebook that I'll be uh, showing you right now. Okay, so the first step is uh, uh, when you uh, run the notebook is to install transformers uh, because in default Google Colab session there is no transformers library. So you would uh, install that and we do uh, web scrapping and we scrap English results. So we are using uh, LangDetect library uh, which helps to um, identify English text. So let's do this and execute the first step, install. And we should uh, see that um, collapse session is being initialized. And by the way, uh, we'll do uh, like quite many um, inference calls to classify the text uh, using um, uh, transformers pipeline. And I would recommend to change runtime time to GPU because with CPU it would take uh, way longer uh, to run the inference. With GPU it runs way faster. Okay. We got libraries installed, and now let's do imports. Um, there's a bunch of imports here. The one uh, which is uh, in particular interesting is the one that comes from the transformers library. We are importing pipeline. So the pipeline is some sort of wrapper or helper class that um, allows with very simple API to execute um, uh, hugging face transformers functionality. Uh, import is done and now in this step we are uh, actually initializing pipeline with specific task and we are referring here to zero shot classification. Uh, there are other pipelines as well like um, sentiment analysis, um, maybe name entity recognition or text summarization. So depending on what you want to achieve, you would uh, use specific pipeline and then you get all the functionality underneath uh, the trans and the pipeline out of the box. Uh, we see that it's around 1.6 gigabytes uh, model, uh, default model, uh, which is trained uh, for zero shot classification for the English text. If you want to do zero shot for other languages, there is a model as well uh, available on a hugging face um, uh, uh, model library. And we're using device zero. This means that we would rely on GPU for, for this pipeline. Okay, model is initialized. Now, in the next step, we are uh, actually uh, defining helper function for uh, web scrapping. We are executing um, Google search for getting first 100 results here. And uh, for each of 
the results, we would navigate uh, to the result page itself and we would scrub the text and then we log all the scrubbed results in separate rows in CSV file. Okay, I'll not go in detail through that function. You could uh, look at, uh, you can check it by yourself and it just does web scrapping. Okay, and this bunch of logic. Uh, it could be improved in a way, uh, right now we are not checking for the garbage text. If uh, there's some JavaScript text is being scrapped, we are, we are, we are not checking for that. So you could um, add some logic here in addition to do additional checks. Okay, now, uh, Okay, we could scrap the data first and uh, I'm using query uh, climate fight. So from Google search, I'm trying to fetch all the information related to this query uh, from the top 100 results. And it pr prints zero here at the end. It means that um, uh, the scrapper got additional logic. It checks if um, we would uh, open Wikipedia site, um, then we would go to the second level for the web scrapping as well. Uh, because in Wikipedia article, usually you would have references and typically references are related to the same topic like a main page. So it makes sense to scrap um, those references as well. If it's a regular page, then we're just scrapping here on the first, uh, first level. And it would go for the uh, 100 uh, results. It would take, um, sh should it should take around one minute or so. And it's, uh, it's pretty quick. Okay, web scrapping finished, took uh, 155 seconds. And now we could uh, check that uh, CSV file was generated here. We can, we can see that. Uh, and we could check that there are 1,945 records uh, actually fetched and created in the CSV file. And we could print out data. And you can see this is the sentences that actually were fetched um, by our scrapping logic. And now we would like to go through the, each of the sentence and uh, classify it. And the task here is not just classify if it's positive or negative. And I would, I'm testing something more advanced. I provide a set of labels like renewable politics, emission, temperature, emergency. And um, I would like to see for the each sentence where it belongs to each topic, to which topic. There's an additional topic called uh, or label which is called advertisement and I notice that um, zero short learning is quite good to identify advertisement because there are uh, cases where the text is not related to the topic directly but it was available on a website, it was scrapped and it's kind of tricky to by yourself to understand if it's advertisement or not and we would like to ignore it and we would not to count advertisement text to any uh, main topics. So we would, we would like to group it into the separate topic and ignore it. So for that reason, I, I have this advertisement section here. Okay, and uh, the way it works, we're going in a loop for all the sentences and uh, for each sentence we're calling classifier pipeline and uh, feeding our sentence with candidate labels. And as a result, we are getting um, two arrays. One is scores and classes. So for each um, class we are getting, uh, for each label class, we are getting score assigned. And the, the first one uh, is the top one. So with the highest probability. In this case, we are doing binary classification, a single class classification here. And um, it means that um, um, <clears throat> a zero shot model will try to identify from a list of labels, the single one, which is um, most likely related. Uh, to our sentence and it will get higher probability and all other labels will get lower probability proportionally. There's uh, another option to do multi-class classification and I'll show it as well uh, below where uh, model is assigning um, probabilities to each label independently. So uh, it would check how likely uh, that our sentence is related to renewable and then separately would check how likely, likely it's related to politics and so on and uh, each label would get its own probability. This is useful where um, the sentence is in question and it might be related to multiple topics and when you do multi-class classification it's easier to um, kind of to get the result and understand where 
uh, topic belongs, where sentence belongs, if it uh, actually belongs to multiple labels. So let's run it. And this will take longer uh, because it will do classification for each of the sentences. And there are quite a lot of them around 1,900. So one, once it's done, uh, we can check the results. <clears throat> okay, classification finished, and uh, now we got the results. Uh, so we, we, this is the uh, distribution of topics for all the sentences that were scrapped. If you, we would check the data and draw a chart, you'll see the top number of uh, sentences were classified for classified for emission, politics, and uh, temperature and less for renewable and emergency. So the emission one is the top top topic, which gets the 385 sentences assigned. And if you, we would look for the sentence itself, you would see, um, for example, this 83 percent for emission. This is the sentence, and this this 57 percent for politics, and if you would go, there's a 65% for renewable and so on. And if you would like to run multi-class classification, the code is the same. It's, uh, the only thing we would need to add multi-class true uh, to our uh, classifier pipeline. And then we would get independent uh, probabilities for each of the labels. So let's do it, let's run this classification task and it will run through all the sentences again and assign um, independent probabilities. Okay, multi-class classification calculation is completed. This is the distribution uh, for the sentences per, per, the, per all labels and <clears throat> And now we can see that there are, for example, let's see this, 93%, um, 55, 84, uh, and for temperature, politics, and emissions, so independent, um, uh, independent classifications are turned right now. And let's see other cases. For example, this one, uh, 98 and 81, so uh, high, very high probability for emission uh, so far, and also very high for politics. So both topics are assigned for that sentence. Now let's see if we display a chart. So we have the trend is the same like uh, single class classification. Emission it gets the top, uh, but numbers are different. So for now for politics, for example, we have 400 and previously we had just um, around 150. So this means <clears throat> the same sentence was assigned for multiple topics and that's why we get higher numbers per topic. And this is probably in this specific situation, this is more accurate because um, uh, sentence may have different meanings. And uh, if we get different meanings, we split into different topics and cover both, um, both labels. Uh, so in this case, uh, it could be more accurate and precise representation of the topic distribution across all the sentences. Okay, so thanks uh, for watching and hopefully this example uh, was useful and you will find um, uh, practical use in, in your uh, scenarios. So if you enjoyed this uh, video, please hit this subscribe button and um, see you next time. Bye.